you make sobriety your number one priority, everything's going to fall into place. In season one, we really explored Sam's sort of physical sobriety. She has a year by the end of the season. Her main focus and number one goal is to just not drink. She tries to start dating a little too early. She tries to fix her relationship with her mother a little too early. But the one thing she does succeed at is not drinking. Happy one year sober. Yes! Yeah. And so coming into season two, we sort of go deeper into her emotional sobriety and what happens when the maybe day-to-day -day threat of drinking doesn't feel as severe, um, what else pops up. I have the first real job I've had in years, and I have a boyfriend. For Carol, it was all about Samantha having crashed and coming back to live with me. You're gonna start paying me rent or find another place to live. I just got out of rehab. You know, she's a disaster, she's a nightmare. Apparently, alcoholism is a disease, and uh, boy, do I have it. <laughs> Did you just say you have a disease? Dealing with that, like post all that, those years of her drinking, and then this happening, and now how do we deal with each other? So we had a nice journey through season one. She stayed sober. Giving me your keys. You got your license back. Thank you. I think there's no question that their relationship has improved, and I think, you know, it's part of the process of getting sober is, you know, Sam saving her life in more ways than one, and she's saving the relationship between her and her mother, but it is an incredibly complicated one to save that quickly. So I think there is plenty of more road bumps along the way for the two of them. There was a little bit of healing that went on at the end of season one. I'm so grateful for this Samantha. I just want to freeze her in time and hold on to her for as long as I can. So that was a nice arc, but there was very, very far for these two characters to go. And what's exciting about this season, which we sort of did in season one as well, is we have another flashback episode, so we get to see where a lot of those issues started um, between the two of them. So yeah, I wouldn't describe it as all tidied and fixed just yet. This second season, Sam's second year of sobriety, is much, much, much harder than the first year. Carol, can you control your daughter? No, I can't. My character is basically in a state of intense distress <laughs> from about the third episode all the way through to the end. Because it stopped being about is she drinking or is she not drinking in the second year, it actually became about all of the stuff between the the mom and daughter, between the two of us. You are beautiful, even without makeup. I have so much makeup on. And it's perfect. Season one, Britt goes through a very special journey. She is about to get married to her ex-best friend's ex-boyfriend. And right when she's having her bachelorette at the top, we see that Samantha has just arrived from New York and sees Britt at the bar, so we sort of have this not so happy reunion. Are you sorry about the hat or the marrying my ex? I'm just a little confused. You don't have to be a about it. And Britt is figuring herself out. She has to deal with her ex-best friend coming back into town, not knowing that she's about to get married to her ex-boyfriend, having to sort of face old demons with the friendship that was broken by Sam's alcoholism, and she's kind of starting to question all her choices in life. At the end of season one, we see that she does go through with the marriage and that sort of breaks her down to a place where she goes back to Samantha and they reconnect. Hi. I need you. You don't really know where it's gonna go at the end of season one, but there's something a-brewing between them as friends. Felicia's journey in season one goes from being the bad influence friend or the fun friend. All right, but stop me at two. You gotta be sure. Two. Really? To being the responsible friend. I think Sam has a different view of Felicia at the beginning of season one that revolves around her drinking because that's mainly how they hung out in the last couple years. I think Sam's surprised to find out that they have a deeper friendship further than that once they eventually get down to it and, you know, figure out where they still connect past the partying. Oh my God, stop texting. Okay, I know you're out of practice. Just say what you mean once. Nothing is worth a paragraph, nothing. So Felicia's in a new chapter. Felicia is 
starting a new relationship. You wanna grab a drink? Sure, yeah. Felicia is revisiting old relationships and what they mean and how she can work around what her child needs versus what she needs. I think she's still trying to rewrite a view that a lot of people in this town have of her and of really trying from a class perspective to improve her life and make choices that are gonna better her life and her son's life. Season one was uh, built on a lie. <laughs> um, uh, this is Samantha. Samantha, say hi to James. Hi, James. Hey. Him kind of lying to himself and a lot of people around him about like how fragile his sobriety was. Have you been drinking? No. Oh. He was pretty much telling himself, if I do all of these things, then I should be fine. And if I keep on uh, taking my attention away from drinking with this very rigorous and rigid schedule, I should be fine. I'll be able to stay sober for as long as possible. And then things started going well for him, so he felt like he needed to self-sabotage and backslip into uh, drinking. I kind of freak out when things are going too well. Yeah, that was a, a pretty de devastating moment for me. We were in this thing together and now it can't happen. We can't yes, happen. Yes, it can, no. it can. In season two, he is pretty much just picking up where he left off, trying to figure out how to make his sobriety more solid. Bob is, um, he is a delight. He's a happy man. In season one, he was just kind of full of life and very positive. And in season one, things are going very well for, for him and Carol. And in season two, it kind of starts out the same, and then there's a little more uh, tension. Because of the emotional place that Carol's in, that she doesn't have any business being in a relationship with anybody as far as what was going on for me emotionally in the season. All this unprocessed grief, all the stuff with the daughter. She's not the character who knows how to have a relationship over here, but doesn't know how to have one over there. If I, if I can't figure out how to have a relationship with my daughter, there's no way I can have a relationship with this man. She just created huge problems with every single person that crossed her path in season two.